Okay, so today we're going to be diagnosing an EGR problem on a 95 Toyota 4Runner. Now, we've already verified the problem on the uh, vehicle by using uh, flash code diagnostics. Now, flash code diagnostics, uh, this vehicle is getting a 71. If it's OPD1, you have different codes. This is a 71, which means we have an EGR function problem. Okay, so we're going to go through the steps of doing this. And okay, now the first step is you want to check to make sure that the EGR passage and the EGR valve operate. Because if you don't do that first, you might end up doing a lot of other troubleshooting that you don't need to do. So we're going to check the EGR uh, valve and the passage before you do anything. Okay. Okay, so how you how do you do this is you're going to jump vacuum directly to the EGR valve right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is you got to jump back into the EGR valve, which is right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to disconnect this EGR valve, and we're going to directly put vacuum on the valve. Now what should happen is at idle the engine should stumble and die. Okay, if it doesn't, then you know you got a problem either with the EGR valve or the passenger block. So I'm just going to put some vacuum on this now and we can see what happens. Okay, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so the, that, that verifies that the EGR valve and the EGR passenger are doing their job. Okay, now we're going to check to see that if we're getting vacuum to the valve. There's our trusty vacuum gauge. Now, we're, now we need to see vacuum on that while we're driving and that will verify. If we don't, then we know we've found our problem already. If you get it in here. Vacuum and our EGR system is in off. Speed. I don't know why our EGR system isn't working, which makes sense. So the next step, since we verify we don't have vacuum assistance, is to trace back our vacuum uh, source to the EGR valve. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the vacuum coming up to the system out of the throttle body. Now the vacuum, if you follow these two lines right here, these are the two lines that are developing vacuum to the EGR system, and they're going to here and here. Okay, so now we're going to check the vacuum coming out of... Uh, this part of the throttle body is feeding vacuum to P input of our, this is our EGR vacuum, uh, 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 vacuum control valve. So we got to see we got vacuum coming up to that. So here's the vacuum line coming out of the throttle body. So we're going to rev this up and see if vacuum comes up here. Right, so let's check our vacuum. Coming up, coming out of the throttle box, okay? okay so we're going to actually check the vacuum coming up to the vacuum control valve at P. This is, I disconnected the line here and I got my uh, vacuum gauge stuck right here. So we're going to go check it. And we're not getting it there. So we, so we determined that we have no vacuum. We got vacuum at the source but we're not getting it out here, which means either the line between this point and the source is blocked or open. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow some air through here and then we're going to see what's going on. So let's blow some air. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, here it coming out. But it isn't coming out of this end. And there's a hole, actually, you, you can kind of I'm gonna zoom in on the hole right there. If you can see this hole right down here on the line, that's going to be our problem. Got no vacuum, no, no, the vacuum is leaking out at this point here. 
So the solution is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to replace this hose right here. So here's our broken EGR vacuum hose. So we're going to replace this hose right now and re redo our test and make sure we got a good system. Prepared our system. As you can see, we're already getting vacuum up on our gauge, which is what we need to do coming to the EGR valve. Here we see the vacuum coming up. That's what we wanted. Verify the rest of the system. The system should work correctly as advertised. So, so the, the last step in clearing our code 71 for our EGR malfunction is to clear the code. So we got the engine light is on the dash. Here's our engine light. It's still going to be stay on until it runs its routine or whatever. So we're going to clear the code. The way you do that is you disconnect the battery and you leave it disconnected for a while. So we're gonna now we're gonna disconnect the battery here so you disconnect your cables. And disconnect it. And you're gonna and what I like to do is when you do this, it's gonna reset your radio too, but you gotta just reset that's all for you. And then I just short out the two the two leads together and then that kind of sh that kind of moves all the memory out of the computer and this might well leave that disconnected for a few seconds for a while so now that we reconnected the uh, battery the EGR light is out and our problem is fixed so this is Steve story from car inspectors uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll be trying to do a lot more uh, how-to videos and uh, car diagnosis and repair and different things like that. And thank you for watching.